Hi everybody, and welcome back to another video. So I thought today, as we have in the past, it would be fun to go through some of the recent pickups that I've acquired. And then I also have a little bit of an announcement that you can stick through to the end of the video for. Some of you may already be aware, but um, for those of you that aren't, a little bit of exciting news and a new way to keep up to date with me. So we have a decent selection of games. Actually, I think now that I'm looking at it, we don't have any two games from the same system. So a nice diverse selection here. Some of them are similar systems. And there is one that is off screen that is not that doesn't fit into that stack. So yeah, let's just go through these, talk through why I picked them up, what I think of them, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can get some new recommendations for your collection. First up here is a game called Pac-Man and Galaga Dimensions. Hit it with no glare there. So for those that haven't played this game before, this is, um, obviously it's a port of the classic arcade game, so you can play Galaga, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. Um, actually, I don't know if you can play Miss Pac-Man now that I'm looking at it. It might just be Pac-Man. But either way, that's not why you're, you're you're buying these versions of the games. What you want on this collection is the original games, the new ones that they've added in. So there's three on here that I've played. It is Pac-Man Tilt, which is this really fun platformer that uses the gyroscopic controls of the 3DS, so you're tilting. In addition to jumping, you're also tilting the 3DS around to roll Pac-Man around. Um, and so you'll, you know, you'll get to a wall that kind of has like 45 degree angled ledges, and you tilt it to make those 90 degree ledges, and then you can jump up the wall. So that's a lot of fun. There is a like first person shooter, like a Panzer Dragoon style game called Galaga 3D Impact which is, uh, it's got this really interesting mechanic where you you can either destroy enemies by shooting them with your lasers, or you can absorb them, like using your tractor beam. And depending on how many of a certain type of enemy you've absorbed, you'll level up certain abilities about your ship. So, you know, if you absorb 10 of a certain type of enemy, maybe you'll double your fire rate for your primary attacking laser. Or, you know, maybe you absorb three of a different type, and now you get optional shields or bombs that you can use stuff like that so it's it's actually pretty well done and it's a lot of fun honestly it could have been a standalone game i feel so it's worth picking up just for that and then the last one is called galaga legions and that takes galaga it's, i mean it's still like a single screen shooter but it turns it into a shoot 'em up um, and it feels a lot more like modern shoot 'em ups not bullet hell but like modern more traditional um side scrolling shooters so those three modes alone, in addition to getting Pac-Man and, uh, I don't remember if I said, but Pac-Man Championship Edition, you get a lot out of this one cart. This is definitely uh, a really good pickup for the 3DS. Also, I just, I just absolutely love this cover. It's so colorful. So bright. Here's the back of the case in case you didn't have a chance to see it. Oh, hi there. Cool. The next one here... Uh, power shovel on the PlayStation. So I don't have much to say to this because I haven't really popped it in yet. I'm sort of saving it. But uh, from what I do know about this, I've, I've been wanted this in my collection for a while. This is, you essentially are playing as these like large construction vehicles. And it's just this sort of like arcadey, goofy type of um, arcade like puzzle game, I suppose. Um, but we, we picked this one up. There is a store local to us that has now reopened uh, in, in a very limited capacity as a result of the, the pandemic. And so they only let a very small handful of people in. You need to be wearing masks. And, and it's essentially it's as safe as it can be, which is nice. But uh, it had been so long since we'd gone out to a game store. We thought, you know what? We'll take the necessary precautions and we will go check it out. And yeah, I was happy that there was a handful of games in there that I've been looking for for a while to add to my collection. And they're actually at really good prices got this for probably half of what it usually goes for so yeah shout out to level up games i wonder how many level up games there are in the world next up another one that i got at the same time this is a psp game it's a sort of beat-em-up action not really a platformer i guess just an action beat-em-up this is deadhead fred the conceit of this game is you you play as this character named fred who I think is sort of like a Frankenstein's monster. He's been developed by this scientist, and he has uh, interchangeable heads. 
So you start with a couple by default. You start with this one that's on the cover, that sort of like traditional brain in the glass jar. You also start with one that's like sort of like a, a statue, like a mummy head, and then a more traditional like zombie head. And each of these heads has different fighting styles associated to it and different abilities. So, you know, some of them might be fast, quick attackers. Some of them might be like slower or harder hitters. And then they each have their own abilities too. Like right away, the zombie one has the ability to like absorb a bunch of water into it and then blow that water out, which you can use to either spray at enemies or solve puzzles by like putting a fire out. So uh, I, I haven't gotten super far in this, probably an hour or two. But this is kind of one of the holes that I felt like was in my PSP collection. This is the type of quirky, odd game that is never going to get re-released anywhere. It's sort of just like stranded on the PSP, and so I wanted to pick it up. Um, oh, the, the combat mechanics are like third-person beat-em-up mechanics. So you think of like Yakuza Kiwami, uh, but, you know, on the PSP. It's sort of like that. Just a lot of fist, hand-to-hand -hand combat type stuff punches and kicks but that's a good one next up here is a classic game this is for the original nintendo we have ducktales so i this last i guess it would have been almost a month ago now three weeks ago or so i had some time off of work uh, i just you know projects had had sort of been wrapping up and i'd been accruing time and i needed a little bit of a, a break a reprieve and so I took two weeks off, actually, which was very refreshing. I liked it a lot. It was very good. Um, and one of the things I was excited for during that time was that I could actually go to garage sales. I mean, I do go to garage sales every week, but I, you know, I work a more traditional nine to five type job. Uh, and that means that I can't go to garage sales other than on Saturday. And some of the other people that, you know, either garage sale or, or resell more full time or just have different working hours. They're able to go on Thursday and Friday, so in my area, at least, a lot of the good games have been snatched up by Saturday. You do still get the occasional score by asking, you know, if people have games and, and maybe they'll pull them out and they didn't have them up for sale initially. But I was excited because it meant that I actually would get sort of first crack equal shot at getting some of this stuff. And thankfully for me, I did score. I actually got a lot from one garage sale. I got a Wii with some games, and um, I guess I could show it here. I think I have it nearby. I also got this NES with a stack again, so I didn't get... This is a new world. This is a distant world CD. I, I did not get that there. That's just mine that was sitting around. Uh, but yeah, I guess I got this stack of games. I got this NES system and a couple of controllers in here too. Um, the controllers are maybe the worst condition NES controllers I've ever seen. I'm not going to fully uncoil that, but I think you get the idea. Someone's dog had a good time with that controller. There's another one in here, it has all the hookups. Um, and for the system and the games, I think I paid $60. I, di I did, yeah, so um, I guess I can run through the games real quick here, just so you're aware of them. Oh. Let's grab this out. I'm not gonna show you the system, because oh, most people know what an NES looks like. But we got Paperboy, Bases Loaded 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, Knight Rider, I don't really know anything about this one, Double Dribble, the original Mario Bros., and Donkey Kong Classics. The reason I go through those kind of fast is because everything else in the stack I either already have or is not a game I'm interested in. I, I might pop in Knight Rider and check that one out, um, but I have all the rest of these. And so for $60, I will probably just sell that unit back with those games bundled in and, and make the money and then I will have gotten to keep DuckTales for free, which is the whole reason that I go to garage sales is to be able to do that. Um, that was funny actually. I think she had it out for 120 not funny, I guess, but she had it out for 120 and she said, you know, I'll be honest with you, I threw a completely random price onto that system. Um, and I, I told her, honestly, I was like, well, you know, looking at these games, like there's some that are worth 10, 15, maybe 20. 
on a good day, you know, you maybe sell your Mario 3s or, or DuckTales for that amount. Um, but the bundle itself, there, there's no games in there that are worth a ton, and the bundle itself isn't, like, uh, astronomically priced. And I said, so I think if you leave it out at 120 I wasn't even going to try to buy it because I didn't want to, like, tuck her all the way down from that. I was going to just try to buy some of the games out. I really just DuckTales from her. I said, if you leave it at 120 you might get someone to buy it, but honestly, you probably have to drop the price. Um, and she was like, oh, well, you know what? I'll just do 60 then. And so for 60 I was like, you know what? For 60 I'll pick up the whole bundle. Um, but yeah, I came out right away and told her, I was like, you know, this DuckTales game is probably the most valuable one. It's not worth a ton. If you had the second DuckTales, though, you'd be in the money. So she did not, sadly. All right, we got three more games coming up. Next one will be quick because it's not one that I've played. It is being saved for October, and that is Blair Witch. Uh, I have not played this yet. I was considering playing it when it came to Xbox Game Pass, but then I saw that they're in PAL, if I tilt that, um, there was a physical version of this game. And so I decided I would pick that up. I wanted to have a physical version of this. I kind of always like to have physical versions of survival horror games. I mean, I like to have physical versions of everything, but... Uh, survival horror games, it feels particularly appropriate because, I don't know, maybe P.T. scared me when P.T. was taken down. Now I never know when I'm going to be able to play a survival horror game again. Uh, and this is one that I will be playing in October. Come spooky season. Alright. Next up here, a DS game that I bought uh, sort of just like on a whim. And that is Johnny Test. This is a licensed platformer for a, a series or a cartoon that I am not familiar with. I don't know if anybody else has ever watched or heard of Johnny Test before, but I had no idea. I had kind of guessed that this would be based on something, but uh, I did not buy it based on the name recognition. I bought this because one, it is a pretty competent 2D side-scrolling platformer. Uh, it actually, I don't know, it, it, it plays pretty well. It has sort of like this momentum to the way that you run in this game and um i don't know how to describe it other than the game feels very speed runnable it seems like if you wanted to put in the time that you could have an actually pretty good speed game here uh but i love 2d platformers it was very very cheap and i took a shot on it and i'm happy that i did this is one of those again sort of like deadhead fred one of those games that just sort of will be orphaned on this system forever and i wanted to check it out uh, it also, th this also feels like maybe someone in the future could call it a hidden gem and then it would not be $5. Last one here. I don't know if you saw that. If you did, you got a sneak preview. So this is a interesting story and I guess I'll just, I'll just blow it and, and show you right away. We have Earthbound in its big box. Very exciting. Uh, and, oh, my box protector is opening up. But. So this is uh, mostly complete. It has the game, it has the the guide, and it has the cartridge now. Uh, it doesn't have the cardboard insert, but I'll have to track one of those down separately. Um, so interesting. a couple of interesting stories about this game, actually. I have had this box and the strategy guide for many years. Uh, a long time ago, I found an eBay listing that had the box and the manual. It actually was a listing for the manual, or what they called the manual, Earthbound Manual, which is the guide. And it was very cheap. It was, I don't know, it was like 50 bucks or something like that for the guide. And in the listing it said it includes original box, and so I bought that sort of optimistically, and sure enough, it did come with the box and the guide. It did not have the insert like I mentioned, and it didn't have the cart. So I've had this sitting around sort of waiting to be completed for a long time uh, and then somewhat recently I was listening to the Polykill podcast um, well not actually the Polykill podcast I was listening to the Drunk Friend podcast which is on the Polykill network so for anyone that hasn't checked it out you should check out the Drunk Friend podcast it is a podcast between Travis who is NES friend on YouTube um, and also a co-host of the Polykill podcast and then Snestrunk, who many of you are probably familiar with. He seems to be relatively popular. 
um, but they have a podcast together that is very good. They always bring on a guest from YouTube or Twitch and have a lot of really interesting conversations. So I would highly encourage you to check them out. But on that podcast, they, uh, Travis was talking about how his local game store was adjusting to the pandemic and how they were bringing a website online, and which I, something that I thought was pretty cool. They had a 5% discount code for listeners of the Drunk Friend podcast. So I went onto their site. They happened to have a copy of Earthbound on there. And with the code, I got it for a somewhat reasonable price. Um, I didn't get like a steal on it. I paid basically what the game is worth. A little less than what it's worth in the current game market, but I anticipate it will go back down and it, it will be fine. But, you know, to support the podcast, to let that store know that the recommendation made it through... And because I've had this kicking around forever and I've always sort of just been sleeping on buying a cart, I finally decided to pull the trigger. And so it came. It works great. You know, save battery works. It's authentic. I opened it up. Not that I didn't trust the store, but um, yeah, they did an awesome job. I'm failing to recall the name of the store. I want to say Super Game Station. SuperGameStation.com. Uh, if that's not correct, I'll put the actual link down here. If this is just me swiping across the screen and nothing happens, it means that it was supergamestation.com. Uh, so yeah, I finally have a complete inbox Earthbound, which sort of feels good to have that hole filled. Um, and that's all the pickups I have for today. So yeah, it's been a pretty good couple of months in terms of finding games and playing games. Uh, but I did say that I had a little bit of news at the beginning of the episode here. And that is that I have started regularly streaming on Twitch. So my Twitch URL is twitch.tv slash Blinkoom. I, if I'm motivated, I'll put it down in the description. I will be motivated because I want you to come hang out. Uh, it's also the same name that I have on YouTube, so you can just look up Blinkoom too. I think I might even have it linked in my profile. But, but yes, I every three times a week now on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. Uh finally playing through some of the games for the cartridge club or for my that have just been sitting on my backlog forever whatever it might be um, there's an awesome community of people over there already uh, and if you want to come hang out and you know chat and play some games definitely should um, what i'm hoping to do with the twitch channel is combine some of what i do with youtube so uh, I'd like to, you know, live do some pickup type stuff, some impressions, some some things that I would normally post to YouTube, uh, be able to interact with people live while I do that. So, you know, think of, I, for example, I did a pickups video that included some of this stuff um, and some other stuff live on my Twitch if you were there. So you could have, you know, seen what I was showing in real time and we can have a conversation about it, which is awesome. So that doesn't mean that the YouTube's going anywhere. The YouTube channel will still be here. Uh, I've just added the Twitch on top. So, again, it's twitch.tv slash Blinkoom, B-L-I-N-K-O-O-M. And feel free to come hang out and watch. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. It is very kind of you to take 20 minutes out of your day to watch me talk about the games I'm excited about that I bought. Um, as always, let me know what you've been picking up. And if you have any recommendations for me, let me know. Um... I'm realizing now during my outro that I forgot to grab Last of Us Part 2, but I bought that too, as did everyone probably who has a PS4. And yeah, I will just see you in the next video or on Twitch. Thanks. Bye.